Face at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good Wednesday morning. It is January 27th. Moviemaker.com is out with a list of the top places to live and work as a movie maker. And the Alamo City actually finished in the top 25. Yeah, so we already know that San Antonio is awesome, but according to this article, for best places to live and work as a movie maker, we have made the list. So the article says the seventh largest city in America is refreshingly direct about how much it wants your business. It says San Antonio is real and ready. Real with authentic, unique, and screen-worthy locations, a rich culture and history, and a welcoming film friendly community. Yeah, we've got, of course, we've got a city department that handles stuff like that. Uh, the article goes on to say San Antonio offers locations ranging from urban to rural to historic to modern. And if you're thinking of moving to the home of the Alamo, the article says taking advantage of the city's budget friendly creative spaces like and got to be honest, Steph and I hadn't heard in any of these places. Yeah, no, we hadn't. But they cite places called the Parish, Brownstone Studios and Alamo City Studios and the San Antonio Film Commission is ready to help, it says. Yeah, that's very cool. I just so I just looked some of it up and the spaces look really, really nice. Just didn't know that they were out there. So the commission not only hands out grants to local movie movie makers, but also directs them to other organizations that do, including uh, Luminaria Artist Foundation and National Association of Latino Arts and Cultures. Uh, 2020 has been a tough year. The Departments of Arts and Culture used federal relief dollars and money from the San Antonio Cares for Arts COVID-19 Relief Fund to provide grants of up to 5,000 for independent artists in San Antonio. So New York and LA, uh, Vancouver, maybe Austin, you know, these places continue to do very well even with COVID restrictions as far as movie making, uh, shooting films and TV shows. But San Antonio is on the radar screen and we think there may be a story to be done here about some of these places. I think so. I would like to see more from here, mm -hmm. more from the parish, Brownstone Studios, Alamo City Studios and San Antonio Film Commission ready to help there. But well, we're on the list. For now, let's look at today's night at nine. The Biden Justice Department has formally rescinded the Trump administration's controversial zero tolerance policy for illegal immigrants. The policy called for the criminal prosecution of adults illegally crossing the border. It resulted in the separation of thousands of children from their families. The new action by the Biden Justice Department is effective immediately. An investigation into where the coronavirus came from will soon begin in Wuhan, China. A team of health experts under the World Health Organization will begin their field research Thursday. A report released last year supported the idea it originated in animals and spread to humans in an outdoor market. Local health officials are reporting 821 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, along with 18 more deaths. The seven-day moving average is now just under 1,500 cases a day. The overall number of hospitalizations is slowly starting to decrease. This morning, dangerous weather is threatening millions of people from coast to coast. Three major storms on the move right now, including the northeast, southeast, and east coast. The U.S. kept the title of the world's shark attack capital last year. The nation reported 33 unprovoked shark attacks, which is 58% of the world's total. Almost half of those incidents happened in Florida. Belk department stores are planning to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Sycamore Partners says normal operations will continue as it restructures. There are 16 Belk stores in Texas, including New Braunfels and Kerrville. CC's has also filed for bankruptcy in a court filing this week. CC's blamed the pandemic because the restaurant relies heavily on its dining rooms. Unlike other pizza companies, CC's struggled making delivery a viable option due to its buffet style dining model. Target has announced a new limited time collection with Levi Strauss that focuses on products for sustainable lifestyles. The store will sell more than 100 items from the denim designer, feature home goods, pet products, apparel and accessories. Your Amazon Echo can do a new trick. It can bark. Part of the new Alexa Guard package includes a feature to make burglars think there's a dog in your house when your security cameras sense movement. It will also set off a siren if someone gets inside. And that's today's 9 at 9. We're just chatting about how Alexa now has been trained to woof. To bark like a dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's pretty funny. But um, it, we, so we were joking that we might actually need that because Truman's well, our dogs pretty don't bark. Chill. Gordo's 
chill, mm -hmm. but maybe Alexa barking would cause our dogs to start barking. Would definitely be a better <laughs> guard for the front door. <laughs> Outside with live cam, sunshine yet again, mid 50s. Not too bad, Justin Horn. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. If you asked Alexa today how the weather would be, she'd tell you it's, it's going to be pretty nice. A little breezy, though. Let's take a look at some of the headlines. Mostly sunny and breezy today. More clouds stays mild next couple of days. You'll notice that it will probably become mostly cloudy by Friday. And then as we get into the weekend, we'll get some clouds on Saturday, but some good weather on Sunday. So if you're making plans already, looks okay. Second half of the weekend. Temperatures right now, 48 degrees, Bernie Stage, 50 in Bull Verde, 56 New Braunfels, 54 Stints, and 56 in Pleasanton. We're off to somewhat of a chilly start, but it does warm up nicely this afternoon. Uh, not as warm as yesterday, but nice nonetheless. Pollen count. Mountain Cedar dropped a little bit today, 4,920. Molds dropped too. They're at moderate 840. And Elm decided to show up today. It's a little early for Elm, but it's in there. It's at 60. And uh, looking at the forecast, we should make it up to about 68 degrees. Stays breezy through about 4 o'clock. The winds will calm some tonight. We'll talk more about this attic cloud cover. There is a very, very small chance of rain on Saturday. We'll also cover that coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with TransGuide, there's I-35 New Braunfels and I-35 North at Loop 410. Things look good right there. Top stories we're following today. A motorcyclist is dead after he lost control of his bike and hit a fence this morning. Police at the scene tell us the man may have been speeding, causing him to lose control of his bike. Now, it happened around 1 this morning on North WW White Road near Loop 410. Police say the biker took the curve too fast as he exited the highway. That's when he slammed right into a fence. We're still waiting to learn his name. Police are looking for a woman who they say is responsible for shooting and killing a man in his apartment. Officers responded to the 16,000 block of La Cantera Parkway yesterday afternoon for a welfare check. After several hours of investigating, police ruled the incident a murder. Police are still investigating and they are looking for that suspect. This is a developing story. Can you stick with KSET for the latest information as it becomes available? Investigators are working to figure out what caused a small fire at the shops at River Center early this morning. It happened after 2 this morning in the 800 block of East Commerce Street when a security guard called firefighters when he saw the fire in the parking garage. Firefighters say that fire was seen from a vent in the lower level of that parking garage under the Macy's department store. The fire crews were able to put it out and everyone was safe. The fire did not reach the building. Uh, officials tell us the fire caused a couple hundred dollars worth of damage to a vent. They believe it was started by a cigarette, but they are still investigating to determine an exact cause. In the morning headlines, we have an update on the number of arrests made after the attacks on the nation's capital. The Biden administration dealt a serious blow by a federal judge right here in Texas. A volcano erupts in Indonesia again, and strangers save a family from a house fire. David Sears is here to explain all of that. Oh, wow. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Young folks went in the house while it was on fire to save somebody. Pretty good. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, we're going to start with three weeks removed from the attack on the nation's Capitol building back on January 6th. We are two weeks away from the beginning of the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. He was impeached by the House of Representatives for inciting an insurrection. Since the deadly violence at the Capitol, 150 people have been federally charged. That is according to court records and the Department of Justice. The U.S. attorney also looking at sedition charges. They would be more significant if convicted. Suspects would receive jail time of up to 20 years. There is a $75,000 reward posted by the FBI for information on who planted pipe bombs found outside the Republican and Democratic Party headquarters in D.C. during that riot. President Joe Biden's run on executive orders took a big hit earlier from a federal judge here in Texas. President Biden wanted to halt all deportations for the first 100 days of his presidency. But Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton filed a lawsuit arguing that the Biden administration should have consulted the state before making its decision, which was not done. The judge also said the state could be harmed by the move from Biden. One of the major concerns was the order prevented the deportations of criminals with violent felony convictions. The judge put the orders on hold for 14 days. It does apply nationwide, not just to Texas. And that's a volcano erupting gas and lava. This is in Indonesia. That is about 5,000 feet of lava going down those slopes. Back in November, authorities had to evacuate about 2,000 people when that volcano blew. But so far, this time, no evacuations. However, people have been told to stay outside the three-mile danger zone. Back in 2010, that volcano erupted, 347 people were killed.
And another Good Samaritan story for you this morning. We'll take you to Rhode Island. The Pooler family was just driving down Reed Avenue in Coventry when Dawn noticed smoke coming from a house. She told her boyfriend to pull over. About that time, a woman comes running out of that burning house, screaming that her husband was in the house and he's paralyzed. Cameron Denton, Dawn, and her son Henry rushed into the house with another stranger. They headed upstairs and found the man on the couch. Two of us grabbing him by the feet and two of us by the arms. So my thought was just getting him up out of the house, get him away from the smoke. Yeah, they did get him out of the house and then they were also able to save two dogs. All that before firefighters arrived. The good news, that family was doing good after being saved. The wife told Dawn how appreciative she was and was hugging her son. So you know they were very happy that that family happened by. Timing is everything in this world. Grateful and blessed. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Thank you, David. All right. Right now it is 908, 55 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Target is giving back to its employees. RJ joins us to, still ahead to explain what the company is doing for its workers. Join us later in the newscast for another Katie's Science Lab experiment. David and Katie will teach us about color mixing and you only need a few household items. And Southwest is banning emotional support dogs and Martha Stewart wants to help your dog relax. Alicia Berrera brings us those stories and more next in today's Consumer News. Let's check on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It is down, wow, over 400 points at 30,523. About 12 minutes past the hour, Walmart trying to speed up its delivery and gamers are being offered a thin slice of heaven. Our Alicia Barrera joins us now to explain in this morning's consumer news wrap. Hey, good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, you guys, Mountain Dew, Doritos, Slurpees, everything you can think of that slice of heaven for these gamers. And it's something you don't want to miss. But first, let's start with air travel. There may be less travelers at airports due to the pandemic, but TSA agents are confiscating guns from passengers at a record rate. More than 3,200 guns were confiscated at U.S. airports last year, and get this, 83% of them were loaded. Atlanta's Hartsville-Jackson International Airport took the lead with 220 firearms, and Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport came in second with 176 firearms. The agency says it found about 10 firearms per million passengers screened last year, compared with about five five firearm, firearms per million passenger screen in 2019. And if you love shopping curbside or order delivery, but hate how slow it can be, Walmart says they're making some improvements. Walmart announced it plans to build automated mini warehouses in dozens of stores full of robots. The fulfillment centers will be 20,000 to 30,000 square foot and built either in the back room of the stores or right next to them. Robots are the ones that will gather the thousands of items and human employees will eventually step in to assemble the orders to help meet the demand of online sales seen during the pandemic. The company says these centers will allow them to handle more orders at a faster pace. All right, so I don't even like video games, but I definitely want to win this gamecation. It looks heavenly. The 7-Eleven game, game All Night Experience offers a private stay at a new luxury store in Texas before it debuts to the public. The gamers who book for the all night deal deal through Airbnb will have access to the PlayStation 5. We know everyone's been raving about that. And it's going to be hooked up to a large screen TV with DualSense controllers. But wait, there's much more. The gamers can eat all their favorite 7-Eleven foods and it wouldn't be a true 7-Eleven experience without Slurpees. Plus, the host, none other than Dallas Cowboys quarterback, I think that's what I'm most excited about, Dak Prescott. This special will be available to book through the Airbnb website on Monday, February 1st, and you want to act quickly because, of course, it's expected to sell out. And emotional support animals are getting the boot from yet another airline. Southwest Airlines says it will no longer transport emotional support pets on its flights. The airline will accept only trained service dogs, but owners must show proper forms and documentation for the animal. The policy change takes effect on March 1st. Delta Airlines, Alaska Airlines, American Airlines, and United Airlines have already announced they were ending in relation to the emotional support animals policy. 
And it seems that hanging out with her good friend Snoop Dogg is rubbing off on Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart has launched, it launched cannabis munchies for dogs. She and cannabis company Canopy Growth have introduced a line of CBD dog treats. The collection comes in soft baked chews and oil drops in three different formulas, wellness, calm, and mobility. They have various flavors, including chicken and cranberry. They're available now on Canopy Growth's website. The chews range from 20 to $25 and the oils sell for $40. So Stuart announced her partnership with the Canadian cannabis company in September of last year. And it was actually Snoop Dogg who introduced her to the owner of that company. Mark Step. So if you have a high strung dog, yeah. things are about to get chill. <laughs> or one who can't move and use a whining. So yeah, oh my <laughs> very chill. Thank you, Alicia. Well, it's 916, 56 degrees, not a bad looking Wednesday no. out there for late January, Justin. It warmed up just a little bit. A little bit. You know, we had a front come through last night, but it's not one of those big time cold fronts. It's still going to be nice today. So we're looking at great weather for January. Let's take a look at the time lapse. This is nice. High clouds moving across made for a pretty nice sunrise and uh, we still got some of those clouds out there, but uh, they're not gonna be a big deal today. What you will probably notice are the winds they have just picked up within the last hour. North Northwest will lead about 20 miles per hour. We'll see some gusts up around 25. Dew points are a little bit lower than 31. And really, when we're talking about that front, that's the kind of the one thing that it, it, it did do, bring down the dew points a little bit into the 30s. And we're talking gradual here. This wasn't a huge change. It was already pretty dry, but it's just drying us out even more. And we talked about the winds. Uh, I think we'll see some gusts up around 20, 25 through about the noon hour. And then by the afternoon, you'll start to see these numbers come down some. So some gusts maybe around 15, 20 at 5 o'clock. And then tonight, the winds will uh, be quite a bit calmer. 54 degrees right now, 46 in Curve Hill, 43 Rock Springs, 48 in Del Rio, 54 in Carrizo Springs. And uh, looking at the satellite picture, it's just these thin high Sears clouds that are working through. Again, it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be a, a big deal today. Now, these will thicken up as we get into the next couple days. You'll notice a little bit more high cloudiness tomorrow and Friday. And here's the big picture. And uh, it's actually a pretty active pattern. We've got one system here up across the northeast, another one across uh, the Midwest, and then another big one just off the coast of California. This is uh, our next storm system that we'll be watching. It's going to kind of take a southerly track and then move uh, towards the middle part of the country. Still too far north for us, though, and I don't think we're going to get much rain out of it. And we're already behind for the year, and this is just barely started here. 1.02. For the year, we're about half an inch below average, and we ended last year way below average. So we need some more rain. I just don't think we're going to get much uh, with this next storm system. Here's forecast for this afternoon. Again, maybe a few thin high clouds. We'll see more of those tomorrow. An increase in cloud cover not only for us, but across the entire state. And then as we get into Friday, clouds probably thicken up even more as moisture starts to come back into play. And then here comes the next storm system. Notice where all the showers and storms are up to our north and east. That's where I think we could see some stronger storms too, but we'll just be on the tail end of things. I can't roll out a shower Saturday midday maybe. That's it. And once this moves through, we clear out again. So we had been doing pretty well with these storm systems moving through Texas, giving us some rain. Now we're sort of back in that pattern where everything's just too far to the north. 68 degrees today, mostly sunny. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 and gusty. Keep in mind those winds will calm some tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we start off at 35 here in San Antonio. A few outlying areas could get close to freezing. Certainly in the Hill Country, we'll see some uh, temperatures below freezing. Kerrville, Fredericksburg, two places that uh, could be below 32 tomorrow morning. 61 on your Thursday, 64 Friday, 75 on Saturday. I think we will see some clearing late on Saturday and then lots of sun on Sunday and breezy temperatures in the 70s. And hey, Groundhog's Day is coming up. That's uh, Tuesday next week. We'll find out what he says about the rest oh, yeah. of winter. I forgot about that. Well, Phil, looks like Phil's already out of his hole on your graphic there, Justin. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's a little excited. W waving at everybody. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> 9 20, 56 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, the first private space crew is paying $55 million each to fly on the SpaceX rocket. RJ joins us next to explain what the Houston company plans for the mission. 
Thinking about going to space? Well, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. And good news for Target workers, RJ Marcus joins us live in the studio with some stories trending on KSET.com. Good to see you too, RJ. Everybody's in today. Yeah, we have everybody in-house today. Good to see everybody. Um, yeah, and we start with first uh, this uh, pretty interesting story uh, about traveling to space. Yes, we're going to the moon, everybody. Um, okay, so, well, anyways. <laughs> um, so check this out. If anyone has a cool $55 million to spend, how about spending that on a trip to space? That's what it will cost three men who are planning to take a private flight on a SpaceX rocket. The first private space station crew was introduced just this week. The group will be led by a former NASA at an astronaut. That's good. <laughs> good news there. And this astronaut is now working for Axiom Space. That is the Houston company that is arranged for the trip next January. So this is the first private flight to the International Space Station. And here's a little bit of the itinerary. The group will spend eight days at the space station and will take one or two days to get there aboard a SpaceX Dragon capsule. Love that name there. Each of the private astronauts astronauts had to pass medical tests and will get 15 weeks of training. I would definitely uh, hope that they're getting some sort of training. Uh, we have more information on that on KSAT.com. I have so many questions <laughs> on this one, so uh, go to our website, check that story out. Okay, switching gears a little bit, and this is uh, not a surprise, but still uh, a little bit disappointing. The 2021 Special Olympics Summer Games that were scheduled to be held at Morgan's Wonderland in late April have been postponed due to the pandemic. The Special Olympics CEO said the decision was made to ensure the safety and health of all attendees. Officials are still trying to play the games, though, and say a decision on a later date will be determined and updates will be available on the Special Olympics website. Some good news, though. Morgan's Wonderland plans to reopen to guests in a little over a month. March 5th is the date that they're planning. Guests and visitors, of course, will be required to wear face masks and social distance. And we have more details on this story on our website. All right, here's some good news for Target workers. The company announced that frontline employees who have been working hard in the midst of the pandemic will get a bonus. Target is giving 500 bucks Bonuses to all hourly team members in stores, distribution centers, headquarters, and field-based offices. Pretty cool. This past July, Target bumped starting pay to $15 an hour across the U.S. Target officials announced that they plan to extend coronavirus benefits also this year to help team members get through the year. So Target currently has a little more than 50 job openings right now in San Antonio, according to their website. And you can find more information on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. That's good news. Yeah, it's great. And you know what? I, I, I usually do the curbside. I think most people kind of do the yeah. ATB curbside. But anytime I have to go into Target, they are really great. And they've done a great job during the pandemic kind of uh, making sure everybody's okay. Yeah, they really have. Yeah. Thank, you, RJ. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Right now, it is 926, 56 degrees. A lot more head on GMSA at 9. Like Katie, Science Lab is back. David and Katie explain color mixing in today's walking water activity. That's coming up after the break. Serena Williams partnering with a luggage company to release a line of fancy travel accessories when they are expected to go on sale. Still ahead on GMSA. And before the pandemic, the Texas State Capitol during legislative sessions has been full of crowded hearings and protests. Now, many options are not available due to COVID-19. After the break, Eric Hernandez explains how to connect with lawmakers amid a pandemic. And as we go to break, let's check the roads with TransGuide at Loop 1604 and Bandera Road. I-35 at I-37, the morning commute is over and traffic is fairly light across most of town. Welcome back. The 87th Texas Legislature down full swing, but because of the pandemic, how you connect with lawmakers will look different. Our Erica Hernandez joining us now with what options and protocols are in place right now at the Capitol. Good morning, Erica. Morning. Hey, guys. Good morning. Well, pre-pandemic, you would see crowds at the Capitol's protests, lobbying, and people waiting to speak with state lawmakers. But the pandemic has made the process to be a part of the session different. First, the Senate is requiring people who enter the chamber or committee meetings to first test negative for COVID-19. The House isn't requiring tests, but everyone must wear a mask, and they're also allowing limited public seating in the gallery. Now, the best way is to connect virtually this year, guys. We have a question, though. I want to know, like, are in-person meetings out of the question at this point? 
No, they, they really aren't actually out of the question completely, but it is up to the individual lawmaker to decide what they feel comfortable with. Until more people get vaccinated, I think right now, most are encouraging people to reach out virtually, which in the end may encourage more people who wouldn't necessarily travel to the Capitol to speak to a lawmaker about their concerns. Some committee hearings requesting public input are already set up to meet virtually, and all you have to do is go to the committee webpage and register to have your voice heard. What are some other ways people can connect? Oh, you can kind of just go old fashioned and send a letter. What's oh. that? <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you could send a letter or you could also do it by email. Um, also, you can go through the district offices, which may be easier way to set up an appointment with your legislator. So, for instance, if you want to contact Senator Menendez, you could call his district office here in San Antonio and they can set that all up for you. But, yeah, a letter, an email that could actually go a long way this year when it comes to speaking with your lawmakers. But all that is on our website. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Paper, pen, <laughs> stamp, envelope, put it in the mailbox, everything. Everything. We still do that? Yeah. Apparently so. Okay. And this Are year, it, it's coming back this year. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> the new trend. <laughs> it's a new trend now. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Erica. Thanks, Good to see you. Outside with Live Cam, Katie Science Lab coming up, but uh, right now it's 932. And we got clear skies, temperatures on their way up, despite the fact the cold front moved through last night. We've got uh, again, just a few thin high clouds out there. Temperature wise, sitting 54 at the airport. A lot of 50s on the map at this hour, and you'll still find a couple 40s up there in the hill country, 49 right now in Kerrville. Uh, as we look across the state, it, it, there's really nothing to see. Uh, very quiet. We're sort of in between weather systems as it stands right now. It is cold, though, 21 in Amarillo, 30 in Wichita Falls. And take a look at some of those numbers up north. Negative 20 in the nation's Icebox International Falls, 6 in Bismarck. Even cold out towards L.A., it's 48 degrees right now. So you got to go down to Florida before you find any real warmth. Uh, at least today. Forecast calls for a high up around 68 degrees. We'll see breezy conditions. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20. And then uh, we'll start to see those temperatures uh, actually cool down a little bit the next couple days. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And taking a look out with TransGuide, there's I-35 at Pine. Uh, things are looking okay right now. Not too much to report, but if there are any problems, we will let you know. Got a stalled vehicle there on that right shoulder at 410 in Fredericksburg. Time for another Katie Science Lab experiment. This week we're doing the walking water activity, which I did a double take on. It was on, I thought it said walking on water, mm -hmm. uh, but this is going to teach <laughs> us kind. about not this kind, <laughs> but it's going to teach us about color mixing. David and Katie are here. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. The, wa the walking on water will come in like a few months. We'll graduate to that. Okay, okay. we're working our way Maybe. up to that. <laughs> okay, just kidding. <laughs> are you, you good? I'm getting trying. set, getting set, assistance getting set. Yes, I. this is really fun. Tested this out last night at home. Did it again this morning. It does take a little bit of time, so it's not instantaneous, but that's good because uh, Steph always talks about this. It's good to, you know, have the kiddos, you know, it's not instant gratification with a lot of this stuff. So you have to focus for a little longer. Yeah, yes. a little longer. Mm -hmm. and, and, but you really don't need that much stuff, though. That's the good thing about this activity. You'll need some water. You'll need uh, paper towels, clear cups, or glasses so that you can see what's going on in there, and also some food coloring. So we're going to get things set up right now. David, what we're going to do, I've already done a little bit of this. You're going to take three of your primary colors in the food coloring. And I wasn't able to find the primary color food coloring it, if they were these like pastel colors. And so when you put them in, they're not like, this was the red, but it kind of looks more pinkish. So that's what we're working with today. But you're gonna take your red, blue, and yellow food coloring, put several drops in a cup and, and fill the cup all the way up. David, what did you say to me when I was, was, I was getting these ready? You're awful full. Yeah, awful full. That could be bad. A little spillage for possible. Some. For you. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but you do want them full, and I will explain why. So we've got this those. Is not, I can take my gloves off. This is not dangerous water. Right. It's not acid or anything. It's just pure water. Okay? Just, just don't drink them, David. Just no. pure water. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, so we've got our three cups filled, three more empty cups, okay. so six cups in total, and you're going to arrange them. So we'll go color, empty, color, empty, color, like that. Yes, good job, David, good job, good job. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take paper towels. What I did is I took one, one piece off like this and then I folded it in half and then in half again and tore that in half so that we can make pieces that are kind of the right size to... Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Dip like that. that. In there and that or a good size, there. yeah, to kind of set in the water like this. 
may have to kind of position them, but you'll oh, see right fast. away, yeah. right away, the water starts to walk or move up the paper towel and into the other cup. So you're going to need six pieces of paper towel because, David, we're going to put one, we're going to put one from each cup to the other. This isn't a slow motion oh. thing, Katie. I mean, it's fast. It's, it does. So that's why filling the cups up all the way with water helps because you'll start to see, you'll start to see the movement. You'll start to see the movement right away. And that, and that's kind of cool. I think the kids will be like, oh, cool. Awesome. And so you'll see the color starts oh, to drop. Again. Huh? What will the kids say again? Ooh, ah. Uh. Okay. Speaking from someone who just is a cat. So, um. I hope they'll say ooh and ah. <laughs> they will. <laughs> so, okay, so you'll notice we've got our different colors. They're going to start to mix. The water is going to drop into our clear cup. And if you give this an hour, maybe even two hours, then you'll start to see your results. All right, David, bring it in. Look at him assisting. Ooh. All right, so this is the one I did at about 7 o'clock this morning. And we've got some good mixing here on the tray. So we had our, our red or our pink mixed with the yellow and it kind of made this orange right here. I love these neon colors. So this is kind of like a more neon color spectrum. If you were gonna use the traditional primary colors, it may look a little different, but you still get the idea. The yellow, um, the yellow and the blue made green here on the end. I love this, so much fun. So that's what you'll get after a couple of hours. It's kind of a good lesson in patience. Um, and a good way to teach the young, especially the younger kids about color mixing. What primary colors, when you mix them together, uh, give you a different kind of secondary color. So this is this is fun. I just love the colors. That is very cool. It looks pretty. And it, it brings up the importance of getting the clear, either plastic or glass, but, you know, just yes. so we can actually see them. See the results, yeah. yeah. Look how much the water level has gone down already. That's Quite true. A bit. This yeah. was cool. It's the best of both worlds, Katie, because I think you get some instant gratification from seeing yes. the results, and then yes. over the long term, you see the end result. Yes. Yeah, so pretty Look cool. Pretty colors, and yes. Super simple. Yeah, it's simple. You don't need a whole lot. You probably got this at home. Um, and if you try this at home with your kiddos, please send us photos and video. We'd love to show it off uh, on another GMSA at Nine segment. And uh, we've got all of our previous Katie Science Labs online. Fun, Thanks, fun. David. Good job. Thank you, guys. Good job. Yeah. yeah, we want to try this one. That's we didn't make a mess either. No, you didn't you make go. a mess. That's what next week is for. <laughs> exactly. And you didn't eat anything. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> 939, 57 degrees. You're, You're watching, watching GMSA at 9. <laughs> Jinx. In, in stereo. <laughs> Jinx, a new miniseries based on a popular novel is coming to TV. After the break, we're going to explain where you can watch The, the Great, Great Gatsby. Gatsby. Jinx. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now I have another deal for you that your dentist will thank you for a portable water flosser. This item is perfect for the entire family and it works for implants, braces, crowns, and bridges too. It's a cordless water flosser teeth cleaner by Dr. Bay. Sounds like a mouthful, but this award-winning flosser really supports great oral health. We'll actually give it a little try here. Woo, that is a lot of pressure there so you know it's getting the job done. Now it has a 360 degree rotating nozzle, cleans every corner of your mouth and in between your teeth, three adjustable water pressures. Choose the best mode for your teeth. It also comes with a flosser, nozzle, and USB cable and travel bag. Helps also to fight gum disease and you'll have that great smile. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $46.95. That's a 21% discount. Now you can find this deal and many more at Case at Deals. In morning entertainment news, a big budget miniseries based on the novel The Great Gatsby will be coming to your screen soon. The Hollywood Reporter says the project is a partnership between A&E Studios, ITV Studios, and writer Michael Hurst. Hurst says the adaptation is a more diverse version of Fitzgerald's book. There's no particular network involved yet, but the plan is to shop the series to streaming outlets. Luggage and travel accessories company Away is launching a second collaboration with tennis star Serena Williams. The company says the line has an assortment of luggage and travel essentials. It includes a kid's carry-on, a mini convertible backpack tote, and a pet carrier. The collection is available for purchase starting this Friday. Of course, my favorite, that pet carrier is pretty cute. It is kind of cute. <laughs> Must have accessories for a man like Justin Horn. Of course. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not the not. pet carrier, okay. No, I do I, I do need to get a dog. I keep saying that. Aww. We're going to get a dog for the girls. It's going to happen soon. Okay, we're it ready. Is. Keep us posted. I will. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the aquifer. Where are we? We haven't looked at it in, the, in a while. You know, since December 1st, 
Uh, we've seen sort of a, a decent rise here. It's been slow, but we're above that 660 mark. Technically still in stage one watering restrictions, but we don't really need to water more than once a week right now. Anyhow, uh, the 10 day average is at 665.3 and today we're sitting at 665.4. So really all in all, considering the fact that we haven't got a ton of rain, we're doing pretty good when it comes to the aquifer. Wind gusts now up to 30 miles per hour here in San Antonio. Winds are really starting to pick up just within the last couple of hours. That front moved through last night. Behind it, we are going to get some gusty winds today, and uh, we'll see some gusts up there around 30 miles per hour through the morning time, and then they'll start to drop off a little bit as we get into the late afternoon hours, but still a breezy day nonetheless. Outside, you can see some of those high clouds that are tracking through, so it will not be a sunny day, but I still think we'll see off and on sun. 54 degrees and there is that north northwesterly wind at about 20 miles per hour. Temperature wise in the 50s here across Bear County, 52 comfort. We're now above, uh, well, into the 50s now in Kerrville, 50 degrees there. 56 New Braunfels, 60 down there in Pleasanton, one of the warmer spots, and 57 Kennedy, 56 in Gonzales. High clouds will continue to stream through. They're moving southwest and northeast, and these are really only going to thicken as we get into tomorrow. So quite a bit more cloud cover next couple days. No rain out of these clouds, but it uh, will keep us from getting uh, all that warm. Temperatures will stay in the 60s today. We've got one storm system that's producing a lot of heavy snow across uh, Missouri. St. Louis seen some snow this morning. Another one across the northeast. So several systems here. It's been a fairly active pattern. It just hasn't been affecting us. And this next storm system, which is producing a lot of rain and snow up and down the west coast, that's going to push south, still bring some rain to California over the next couple days, and then eventually work towards the middle part of the country. I'd like to tell you that this one would bring us some rain, but it doesn't look promising. It's going to move to our north, and there's just uh, not enough energy really here uh, to get uh, any showers and storms going. We mentioned those high clouds and mid-level clouds. Those will be moving through tomorrow and uh, on Friday, too. And then our storm system approaches from the west. This is Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. I think we start off Saturday with some drizzle. There's enough moisture there for that to happen. But as the system uh, pushes to our north, most of the showers and storms will be up across northeast Texas. And I think we could see a few strong ones there. But for us, uh, maybe a shower and then clearing out Saturday evening. Today, temperatures up around 68 degrees. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. We'll fall into the 30s tonight, 35 here in San Antonio. So I don't think we get down to freezing in town, but some of those outlying areas certainly could. 30 Kerrville, 29 Fredericksburg, and then uh, tomorrow we're up to 61. 64 on Friday, 75 Saturday, mostly cloudy, but it does clear out on Sunday. Breezy, high of 70, and looking pretty good as we head into February next week, guys. I agree. It looks nice overall. And Groundhog Day finally on the seven day. It is. I Fine. bet Fishing. we're going to have an early spring this year. It's a good call. Just, just a good hunch. call. 947 <laughs> and we are looking at temperatures in the mid 50s right now. We'll be right back. Sometimes we all need saving. Bad news for Grey's Anatomy fans. ABC announced that the wait will be a little bit longer for new episodes. The show, which is currently on winter break, will resume its 17th season, March 11th, one week later than initially planned. When viewers last saw the doctors at Grey Sloan Memorial Hospital, Meredith's battle with COVID-19 had taken a dramatic turn for the worse. Stay tuned. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association announced that movie legend Jane Fonda will receive the Cecil B. DeMille Award at this year's Golden Globes. The award is given annually to an individual who has made a lasting impact on the film industry. Fonda has appeared in top box office films for five decades, starring in classics Clute, The China Syndrome, and Nine to Five. Fonda is a seven-time Golden Globe winner and 15-time nominee. The actress and activist will accept the honor at the Globe ceremony on February 28th. And celebrating birthdays today, dancer and actor Mikhail Baryshnikov turned 73, and Gone Girl star Rosamund Pike is 42. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Rena Roy, ABC News. Good morning. Good morning. Coming up on live, Rosario Dawson from the Go Big Show. Plus, Nelly performs, and we learn how to raise money-conscious kids. We'll see you soon on live. And as of right now, the Spurs <laughs> are scheduled to play the Boston Celtics tonight here at home at the AT&T Center. If you remember back on Monday, about an hour and a half to two hours before the game against New Orleans in New Orleans, 
it was postponed due to COVID-19 protocols. So we'll see what happens. But as of right now, the Spurs should be going through their shoot around. And uh, the only guy listed not going to play tonight is that usual Derek, Derek White, White mm -hmm. out with that, that toe injury. So there you go, 7.30 tip off. So we're a go as of nearly as of, 10 a.m. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, a little time to go. 7.30. Well, as of right now, go Spurs, go. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sears. And as a reminder, we want you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall today at 2 p.m. We're going to have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can make a difference. You can find more information at ksatcommunity.com. Also happening today, our KSAT special, the COVID-19 vaccines ending the COVID-19 pandemic. We're dedicating an hour to look into the science behind the vaccines, how they were developed so quickly, and what they mean for our future. That's vital. And it's today at 7 p.m. right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com, and the KSAT TV app. And let's take another look outside with TransGuide this morning. Uh, traffic is light, but there is that stalled vehicle out there at Loop 410 and Fredericksburg Road, so watch out for that. And we're sitting at uh, 55 degrees right now. We'll be up around 68 this afternoon. Breezy, a little cooler tomorrow. Keep in mind, we'll drop down into the 30s by tomorrow morning. Sunday is a big day, especially if you love hot chocolate. Yeah, National Hot Chocolate Day. Didn't know that. I didn't either. But we'll be ready. Did, did, <laughs> Erica told us that one? Okay. Oh, so sorry. We're, sorry, we stink. Okay. <laughs> She's, wow, that was an actual eye roll. But at least yeah, Erica's in the studio so we can see it. Yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, hot chocolate is the most beloved part of winter according to a new survey. Yeah, it says uh, while some Americans can't wait for the cold weather to leave and spring to arrive, there are plenty of people who say let it snow. Uh, and so according to the survey, it's like 2000 Americans also revealed that building a snowman and celebrating the holidays are among respondents favorite parts of winter. Uh, yeah, sipping on some cocoa beat out, seeing the first snowfall and warming up by the fire to be deemed the best part of the season. The other things that made the list, baking winter treats, mm -hmm. skiing or snowboarding, going ice skating, they made the list as well. Yeah, so it's like 48% enjoyed, so that's at the top, 40% enjoyed the hot chocolate, 47% the snowfall, and 44% uh, sitting by the fire. But you know what, I think, well, I don't, I don't wanna say I know the complete reason behind the survey, but it's because most of, some Americans, like me, are, you know, a lot of people in the San Antonio area don't, don't see the snowfall. So when it gets cold, it's like, oh, okay, we reach for hot chocolate first as mm -hmm. opposed to seeing the snowfall. Oh, yeah. Some of us, when it's below like 70 degrees, it's time to break out the hot chocolate, right? Yeah, the, the, fire, inter fireplace. the interesting yeah. wrinkle to the story, though, is by no means should we be surprised that a survey that was conducted by uh, on behalf of a marshmallow company <laughs> would indicate that hot chocolate is our favorite wintertime activity Funny or drinking hot chocolate. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. How that turned out? <laughs> yeah, it was conducted by one Paul on behalf of the chocolate filled marshmallow brand Stuff Puffs. Oh. Stuff, yeah. It's, so so it's, that's how we wound up here. That's amazing. It's like it's like the people that make snow shovels would do a survey and all of a sudden everybody likes shoveling snow. Everybody likes important. shoveling snow. The most popular winter activity there ever was. I don't but know if those, we did. Uh, those hot chocolate bombs have become like Oh. Every, everyone's all over those and yes. they are kind of cool that's, that's and increasingly hard to find too yes. Uh, yes. it's like the further we got into winter the, the the more that it was almost impossible to find them i know they try to ca carry over for valentine's day and mark and i did yeah. a story and try to find them they were already sold out like weeks ago but again sunday national hot chocolate day erica we are listening this time yes <laughs> we'll remember. have a great day